Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Brotato Danger 5 random random run. Hope you're all doing well. We are taking, of course, a random character and random weapon and trying to beat Danger 5 with it. So let's see what we roll, and then we'll just jump right into the game. All right, we've got the Wildling. So this is a pretty interesting one. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, weapons here that are just kind of free wins for the Wildling, like Stick or Slingshot, I think, are both pretty easy. So I might re-roll those and see if we can get something that has a little more um, interest in, in it. But, because uh, I think I did sticks for my class guide, and I believe we did fighting sticks as my previous random random run. So we'll see what we get, and then I'll just do the run with it. We've got the spear, which I think is actually pretty difficult with the wildling, because spears really want to level, and they're pretty expensive, and they're very slow attacking. So the bonus lifesteal doesn't matter that much for spears. So normally wildling, you won't have to buy any healing because you have 30% bonus lifesteal. But on this version of the character with the spear, we will probably not be able to rely just on our lifesteal unless we find a lot of attack speed, like a Retromation hoodie or something. At time of recording, it was just announced uh, today for me, but probably a few days ago by the time you all see this, that there will be a big potato announcement on April 10th, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. Hoping for an expansion, because that would be fun. Um, obviously, we'll know more at that time, but I'm looking forward to that. All right, we got 55 with two on the ground. Not bad for our first wave. I'm going to reroll here and see if we can find some harvesting or some luck. Either of those I think are good enough to grab as your first item. And then we're going to sell out of the stick here because it's a spear only build since we're a random random build. Let's roll and we'll buy a spear. Spear is a pretty expensive weapon to buy, so it's definitely tough to fill out your weapon set, but on Wildling we don't need to find as many of them because we're capped at level 2 anyways. Nothing else here that I really want, so I'm just going to go for three spears, and then I think we will roll and try to lock another spear. And I am going to lock Lemonade because... So normally on Wildling you don't really need consumable healing or anything like that at all because you have the 30% lifesteal which is a ton of healing that's more healing than most characters ever need but because we're spears and we attack so slowly I think we will need to buy at least some consumable healing I'm going to try not to invest too heavily in healing anyways because the main advantage of wildling is that you're you're kind of secretly an economy build because you don't have to spend on healing and you you can't spend on high level weapons so you get to buy other stuff. We are still getting quite a bit of healing just from our, our spear attacks, but obviously not as much as you would from um, any weapon that attacked faster. Let's roll here, because I'm still looking for harvesting, but I'll take luck again. And then an early scar like this is really good, so very happy to see that. We'll buy the spear, and then I'll roll and see if I can lock another spear. That would just help us get to our leveled up weapons very early, which would be really good. Always trying to pick up the doubled material drops, just to make sure that we don't carry two materials over from wave to wave. Your positioning with spear is always um, interesting and, and sometimes a little bit difficult because you want only one spear to attack. You have high enough base damage and it's slow enough attacking that you usually one-shot things. So you really just want to not waste all your spear attacks on the same enemy. So you want to try to approach from like orthogonal or diagonal corners so that your spears, uh, only one spear gets in range at a time and the rest don't attack. Book, I will probably just take here. Um, three materials is just not that much, and this is worth a unique for fairy if we happen to roll into that. So I think I'll, I'll just take it. And then here, again, rolling for economy, but we found a level two dodge, so we'll pick that up. And I'll just take five luck. I could roll to try to get a level two upgrade here, but I think the rolls are somewhat expensive and we want luck anyways. I'd have liked to find more harvesting early, but luck is still good. And then here, I can't afford both of these, right? That's 50, 64. No, okay, I can. So I will buy Scar and Spear. Throw in one reroll to see if we can lock one more Spear, but we could not. Uh, 
when you're attacking with spear, you want to move along these groups of enemies because even if, it, un, somewhat unintuitively, even if you hit an enemy with the side of the spear, it still does the same amount of damage. So as long as the spear is extended, you can use it to move sideways into enemies and attack them. So you, you want to move perpendicular to big groups of enemies when you're using spears. Um, here, I could just take a level 2 dodge, but this is our, our fifth level, so we're guaranteed a level 2 upgrade. I'm going to roll and see if we can find something that we want more. And attack speed is really important for spears. We want melee damage as well, but attack speed is just going to be so good for us. I definitely want to take that. I'll grab the bag and the spear and the lemonade. I could take alien worm. It is... 2 regeneration and 3 HP, both of which we want, and we get a free reroll, so it effectively only costs us 19. I think it's better. we're better off just rolling again, though. Take this lemonade, and we will take an ugly tooth as well. With spear, it's pretty nice, because it, it can help keep bosses at the, at the tip of the spear, at the distance, which, of course, is what you want to do with a spear. <laughs> that's, that's what they're for. I actually spent many years, because this is the kind of nerd that I am, as a, a teenager, um, learning to fight with quarter staves, which are <laughs> similar to spears, but not sharp. <laughs> um, we are going to take some additional luck here, I think. I could again roll into something that we want more but luck is one of the things we want the most and our percent damage is zero right now so i'll just take eight percent damage i'm not going to worry too much uh, on on wildling I, I think you're okay just getting a mixture of different stats because you have an econ boost already so you just want to make sure that you're hitting your benchmarks rather than rolling for very specific stats we're going to take the Ugly Tooth here, and I'll take Insanity as well, because the crit chance is going to be very powerful. Uh, level 2 Spear, this is effectively we need to find 6 more Spears. Well, this is 2 of them, so now we only need to find 4 more, and then we're just going to go to the next wave. So our healing is, is working a little better than honestly I was expecting it to, even given the very slow attacks of our weapons, because the spear just hits a lot of enemies at once, um, so it's, it's fairly likely to proc every time we attack. The way that lifesteal works is you can never get more than one healing per attack you make with a weapon, so even if we hit six enemies we can't get six points of healing but each of them roll individually until one of them procs so we are more likely we're much more likely to get that 30 percent chance if we hit lots of different enemies i could just take the level two regen but like i said our, our healing has been fine right now so i'm not going to worry about that too much i think i'm going to reroll we could take one armor here but i really want to uh, fix my speed or find just something else that we need more like um, attack speed or something like that, but we'll take 9% speed. Also, the it is a little troublesome that we have no flat damage yet, so that's definitely something I'm on the lookout for. Upgrade our spears, but spears do have great base damage, so at least there's that. Schmoop, I think I'm going to pass on. Our flat damage is something we really need to boost, and 6 HP is obviously a lot, but I'd rather find stuff that we... Um, I, I think we need to find things that we actually care about, and we can pass on HP a little more because we have primitive weapons, and also we have Scar, and those two together are both giving us a lot of HP, because Scar gives us more levels, you get HP every time you level. I will take the helmet, though, uh, just because we have zero armor, and I don't like being at zero armor. And then again, we found two more spears, so we only need to find one more level one, or one more level two, or two more level ones in order to max out our spears. Our damage is pretty good at this point, even though we haven't found any flat damage, so I think we're okay to let the uh, the slashers spawn. 
mostly because Spear gives you a lot of leeway to hit multiple enemies without costing us wave clear, because it's just going to hit everything behind it. Although now that I'm seeing this in practice, I think we, we maybe shouldn't be letting them spawn, because we're just taking so long to kill them. <laughs> Although, because I attack so slowly, it's actually kind of difficult to stop them from spawning. This is just the, the problem of having zero flat melee damage at this point. Just trying to pick up as many materials as we can here. There was a loot alien there, but there was no chance I could kill it before the end. I'll take Cyberball, it's free. We have 25 luck already, so that's going to give us a little bit of extra wave clear. And even though we got the Cyberball, we're definitely taking attack speed over luck. We want to melee damage, of course, as well, but we want attack speed more. Here, I could take 3 armor or 9 dodge, but this is a level 10 upgrade, so I think I'm going to roll for melee damage. Um... We need that more than any other stat right now, and so I'm just going to try to grab that, and we did indeed roll into it. I will go down to zero speed to pick up the snail, because snail is going to be pretty good in the elite waves. And then we'll take gentle alien. Our damage is pretty low right now, so I will take lumberjack shirt. I think that will save us some time killing stuff. And then we do have the lifesteal and... Uh, two consumable heal from double lemonade, so I think we're pretty safe to pick up Weird Ghost here. If I die, then that will be embarrassing, but Weird Ghost is very efficient for HP, and we've we're, we've got a lot of native lifesteal, so we should be okay. Um, with only one armor, I think I take about 10 damage from the enemies, so we should be basically out of the woods now. 12 damage, alright. 12 damage from the armored chargers. So, less from the other enemies. Definitely need more attack speed. That's the the critical component to a spear build, is, a, is attack speed. Um, though some more flat melee damage would certainly not go amiss. That is uh, a principle that I'd like to convey in general when playing this game, is you shouldn't be afraid to buy Weird Ghost, at least before, like, wave 10. Um, if you've bought any healing, you should be able to get out of the danger zone, and it usually won't cost you any farm. We'll pick up the attack speed here, because that's an awesome find. 20% attack speed. Very lucky to find. And then... I don't think the Cyberball is the right purchase, honestly, but I think it, it was either my last video or the one before that where I passed on Cyberball five times and then found uh, Lucky Coin and had 9,000 luck at the end of the game, so uh, we're not going to have that happen again. Um, great to find a level 2 spear that solves all of our spear problems, and I will buy that because that's going to max out our... Uh, weapons going into wave 9, which is great, and then we'll lock this leather vest. I'm going to roll one more time we, if we find a good level 1 item that we want, like a coffee or something, that will be great. And so I think it's worth the 16 to try to find something here. We didn't. I don't think we want landmines, so we'll just lock the Cyclops Worm and then continue on. Now we have the problem of Wildling, which is we are maxed on weapons, but we are still going to roll weapons in the shop. So our shop slots are going to be slightly worse than they would be for another character. But obviously we're still happy to have filled out our weapon set already by wave 9. This zero harvesting build is really interesting. We've been offered none, um, and it is rare that you will see me play without harvesting, except on characters that can't use it. But in this case, we just didn't get offered any harvesting, so... That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Happy to see a loot alien there, though, because obviously crates are great. Loot aliens are really nice. Lure is the sort of... Oh, wait, I do want to kill this loot alien. I'm trying not to use manual targeting, just because... Um, 
while obviously it's good, people who are on mobile can't. So I do want to show this build because it's a relatively easy way to win with Wildling, I think. I want to show off this build uh, as though you're playing on mobile with the restrictions that entails. We'll pick up Claw Tree and get the melee damage and crit chance. And then, uh, yeah, I can go down to 29% lifesteal in order to pick up three regeneration. That's fine. And community support, an amazing find here. Obviously, we need to repair our armor now, but more attack speed is incredible for this character. I'm going to reroll. I think with 25 luck, we can do better than the level one melee damage upgrade. And we did. We got uh, three armor, which is great. And we can pick up 6% dodge as well. Here, we're going to buy all three of these. We've now got triple Cyberball, so any luck I find is really worth uh, going for. And I'll buy Metal, and then I think we're just going to roll past Alien Eyes and everything like that. But I'll buy another Cyclops Worm, because more percent damage, of course, is excellent. So now the only things I'm really looking for are... Damage, just especially flat melee damage and attack speed still. Even with community support and having found that level 4 attack speed and stuff, um, attack speed is still just really good for spear builds, so we still just want even more if we can find it. Uh, max HPs would be really nice, and move speed. We'll start sort of secondarily building up our dodge before we get to the elite waves, but for now... Our defensive stats, I think, are fine now that we've got that, got our armor back in the positives. And we have all the, the lifesteal that being Wildling gives you. So what I really need is to focus on attack speed and, and damage. Leaving a lot of materials on the ground now, thanks to these cyberballs. So now I'm going to take the schmoop. One, because we don't have to pay for it. And two, because we already have a, f a little more flat melee damage. Here, I think we want the four damage over the 10% attack speed. So I'm just going to grab that. And then, do I want the gambling token? We are at 18% dodge already and five armor. So I think we can actually afford to buy gambling token. Getting to 60 dodge relatively early is always nice. Um, let's roll past all of this, and finding Finn is excellent. Yes, it costs us luck, which hurts the cyberballs, but our movement speed is very poor right now, so we'll, we'll buy a relatively expensive 10 move speed, but we, we really need that, so I'm happy to see it. Lock wheelbarrow and metal, and I will still buy helmet, um, just increasing my armor. Damage lagging behind a little at this point, but we have the triple cyberball, so if I can buy a little more luck, then that will help with wave clear. And our individual attack damage doesn't need to be that high for the spears, because they hit everything on the field, as long as you're moving past them. So you can get away with slightly lower damage per attack, since all of your attacks will hit lots of enemies. Low single target d DPS um, is definitely a downside on wave 11, though, because we're facing all the rib cages. But we should be able to cluster them up and then just hit them over and over again. And as long as we can kill them before they get so fast that we can't run away from them, then it'll work out fine. Pretty weak income for these waves, though, because our, our clear speed isn't amazing and our we have no harvesting. Um... I'll just take 9 HP here, and then I'll take 10 luck. That will help with our clear speed, as well as just increasing our overall economy. And I'll still buy Wheelbarrow at this point. Um, harvesting, obviously, it's a little late to start building it, but it's still just going to pay for itself pretty quickly. And we'll buy Metal here, and then Roll again. And then I will buy Shady Potion as well. Awesome find here. We don't really care about losing the regeneration. Like, we'd like to build the regen, but 20 luck will both help a lot with our wave clear, thanks to the Cyberballs, and also make us much more likely to get crates from this upcoming Horde wave. I will buy Sunglasses. I think Crit Chance is going to be pretty good for us as well. Um, spears do have 2x criticals, so any Crit Chance is really good for Spears. And our armor is fine.
We did get a little lucky because we're a spear build and we found we got two horde waves and only our th third boss wave is an elite wave. So hordes obviously are much easier for spears than elites because we've got lots of AoE damage and very little single target damage or relatively low single target damage. So this is a fairly lucky boss wave pattern for us, I would say. One reason I'm trying to not use manual targeting with the spears here is that I think a lot of people who play on mobile feel like they can't use spears without having access to manual targeting, and I, I don't think that's true. I think you can uh, benefit from... You can use spears. You don't need to manually target with them. It's better if you're able to, um, but you definitely don't have to. 137 on the ground. I would really love a gecko. Uh, let's recycle the chameleon. I think 41... No, I'll pay 4% damage and 41 for 3% dodge. The 20% dodge while standing still doesn't matter, but this puts us all, all the way up to 29% dodge, so we're actually now very close to getting our dodge maxed out. Um, I don't think this is a pocket factory game. Actually, we already have Lumberjack shirt. This could... We don't have any trees, and pocket factory is just fun. Let's just do it. Uh... Again, probably not the the correct pick there, but I think that Pocket Factory is just so much fun that I'm happy to pick it up anyways. We'll pick up the Hedgehog here because we do need the melee damage. And then, let's see. I don't think we want Wisdom because we are going to need to burst down Elites. More crit chance is pretty nice for us at this point. It's pretty late for Pocket Factory, so it's not going to help a lot with Wave Clear. It, it, it won't pay for itself, almost certainly, because we have no tree um, and very little engineering. And you usually want to have a couple trees before you buy Pocket Factory, just so you actually get enough turrets to make it worth purchasing. But it's just such a fun item that I can never resist. Although I guess it might not be present on mobile, so maybe I just broke my rule of trying to play like we're on mobile. I can't remember if they patched it into the mobile version yet. Someone could let me know. I'd appreciate it. Alright, that was better. We, we didn't leave as much on the ground this time. Um, we don't have any elemental damage. I was thinking maybe we could do an elemental sub-theme with Pocket Factory. If we found Scared Sausage, we could use Snake and stuff, but I think we're just going to... Uh, roll past that. We'll take the missile, even though it does cost us attack speed. 10% damage is still pretty important for us here. And then I guess I'll just take the 9 HP because it's a level 3. Uh, propeller hat is going to be great. I could buy bandana to go with our pocket factory, but I think losing 10% damage is too painful here. Recycling machine will still pay for itself for sure. Broken Mouth is going to be good. Compass actually does improve the Pocket Factory, and we do still need some move speed. So even though it costs us crit chance, I think I will buy it. And then another bag is awesome. Um, again, I'm going to pass on the Sharp Bullet. We'll buy the metal, though. <laughs> Costing me the crit chance I just bought uh, with the last couple of items, but I think that's fine. You really want to be at, like, 20 move speed on a spear build, because then you can kite the bosses around and attack them from long range. Spear is, is basically like a ranged weapon, so if you think of it as being very similar to a shotgun, um, it'll help you understand how to play this weapon, I think, because it, it's basically an AoE blast weapon um, at range more than it is a, me a melee weapon in the way that other melee weapons work in this game. These cyberballs are kind of going off, actually. <laughs> really clearing through these waves. Obviously, it's a horde wave, so there's a lot of enemies dying for them to trigger off of. Could use a little more armor. Right now, we're getting hit for a little more than I'd like. But 
overall pretty happy with how this is going. We'll definitely take the melee damage here. Adrenaline's going to be a great way to add just like a little bit of extra healing into this build, which is something that we want. We don't want to invest too heavily in it, but we're mostly spending on the dodge, and the adrenaline proccing will just be a nice bonus. Um, and then we can just buy these other two and take our free reroll. Alloy, we won't take... I'll do one more reroll here, and do we want Stone Skin? Do I want Incendiary Turret? So Incendiary Turret is often good on non-engineering builds as well, just because it, it lets you add a bunch of extra wave clear. Um, and I think in this case it actually will be. Because we're stuck at level 2 weapons, we're looking for non-weapon sources of damage on this character anyways, and Incendiary Turret's pretty good. I think that we don't need the Stone Skin here, so I'm going to pass on it. Again, something you won't see me do that often, even when it's right. But in this case, we have five armor and we already have 83 HP at wave 15. So I'm not, I'm really not worried about boosting my health. I'd much rather focus on getting to 10 armor or so. Great find from that crate. We've gotten reasonably lucky at finding um, luck items, um, which I know sounds redundant, but we've been able to really boost these cyberballs to the point where they're doing a lot of extra damage for us, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll take the plant again, and then here we are just going to go with 9% dodge. Now we're almost dodge capped, which is great. We'll take the incendiary turret, and then black belt we're not going to grab. We'd want to boost our luck. I will take the beanie, though, going to 25 move speed, but I'm immediately going to reduce it a little bit by grabbing that uh, armor. We could take vigilante ring, and we would have 16, 17, 18, and 19, so that's 12% damage. I think that is worth it. It's pretty expensive and slow way to buy 12% damage, but our percent damage is pretty low. So uh, Vigilante Ring will, I think, barely be worth it. If it was one wave later, I definitely wouldn't take it. And um, if we were l it, less in need of damage, I wouldn't take it. But as is, I think it's pretty helpful. You can see the Incendiary Turret is combining with the Cyber Ball just to do reasonable damage on the other side of the field. I'm trying to play opposite of it, and it's, it's helping out a little bit with wave clear, although nothing's spawning near it right now, which is funny. Trying to run around to kill these brain bugs. All right, taking a lot of damage, so I do need to back up a bit and wait for the lifesteal and consumable healing to bring us back up to full. And while we do have good attack speed, this is why attack speed is so critical on spear builds. It just, you really need to be constantly attacking. Um, I, I'm not going to take the 6% dodge, even though dodge is really important to us. I'd rather find a 9% and just get it all in one, so that way I only have to spend one level up on it. So we'll just take the melee damage here. I will take the Cyclops Worm. This is a much better way than the Vigilante Ring was to buy 12% damage, but uh, we basically spent twice as much on the damage, the same amount of damage, and got it slower. But I think that was still worth it. Turret here I will pass on. We just don't really need the additional level 1 turret, but I will take the Broken Mouth. Um, Ritual again I'm going to pass on, though. 6% damage for 163 is a pretty bad ratio, uh, but also it comes with minus 2 engineering, which we actually want to avoid. Sharp Bullet, again, we're not going to buy here. It's good with the, the Pocket Factory, but that strategy has just not come together really for this character, so we're just not going to focus on it. I'd much rather just try to boost my actual attack damage at this point. My goal is to find one level 3 dodge upgrade, so we can get 9 dodge and get to dodge cap. And then, other than that, just buy damage for the rest of the game, pretty much. 
little bit of armor wouldn't hurt either. But right now we're definitely behind where I'd like to be in damage. Um, our healing, and in part because obviously our weapons are stuck at level 2. So this, this is always going to be the struggle of the Wildling in the late game, is you've got these level 2 weapons, so your natural damage scaling is going to be significantly behind where other characters would be at this point. Try to get in there and pick up all those materials. And then I'm going to roll past all this. Um, another Cyberball. They've dealt 46,000 damage, which is kind of awesome. I'll take the Warrior Helmet, and yeah, I guess I'll take another Cyberball. Um, nothing else we can buy here, so we won't reroll, and we'll go to fight our first Elite. Currently, I would say we're in okay shape against this Elite. I'd have liked to find a dodge upgrade before we face it, or more armor, but we should be in reasonable shape to take it on. I don't think we're going to be able to kill it, most likely, although I'll test my damage against it. Yeah, it does not look like we're going to be able to kill it, so we're just going to focus on clearing the wave. This is a summoner elite, so we're just going to focus on clearing the summons. Try to kill the brain bugs before they buff everything. But at least this elite is relatively slow moving and will stay far away from us, so... We should be able to avoid it and clear all the summons that it spawns. Making sure to try to attack from the outside in to these big groups of enemies. So we want to be moving around the outside of the field so that we're always in a direction towards the enemies, where our weapon attacks will go through a lot of enemies. That maximizes our lifesteal, and it maximizes our wave clear. Um, here, I'll take the ritual when it's offered like this. Yeah, 100 for 6% damage, I think we will take. Recycle the boxing glove, we don't need that. More luck, We, I mean, we just got a fourth cyberball, so I'll take that. And then, we're not going to buy wheelbarrow here. You'll see me buy wheelbarrow pretty late, but not in this spot. I will buy move speed, though. And then roll again. Rip and tear is awesome when it, uh, and one of the best things we could find for this character. It's so good for spears because you can get the explosions all along the length of the spears, and they can overlap. So you can have um, rip and tear proccing lots of explosions constantly, uh, a core item for a lot of spear builds. And then here, I'm going to take the dynamite, because we just got rip and tear, so that will help with the explosion damage. And we'll take spicy sauce as well, just get to 100 HP a little faster. Wolf helmet, I think that's too expensive a way to buy luck, so I'm just going to pass on all of these. So now, obviously, we would like to find explosion size, or would have liked to find explosion size, if we'd found the rip and tear a couple waves earlier. Since we're just going to the boss wave next, it's uh, mostly going to be about buying survivability going into the boss waves. Um, I'm kind of wondering if I should have bought that sad tomato. Eight regen doesn't sound like a lot, but you, the. So sad. A lot of people look at sad tomato and go. It cost me 50 health, and it gives me 8 regen. That will take more than the length of the uh, wave to pay itself back, so why would you ever buy it? But damage that you take at the beginning of the wave is significantly less important than damage that you take at the end of the wave. And Sad Tomato helps repair the damage that you're taking at the end of the wave while um, not costing you anything, because your other healing will just take care of the initial damage from Sad Tomato. I'm going to recycle this candle, and then I want dodge, but I also want move speed. I think I'm going to roll for a better dodge. I'll take attack speed, though. That's a lot of healing. Ended up not finding the 9% dodge. I really thought we were would be very likely to find it, but um, we didn't get a lot of levels after I made that decision. So possible I should have just grabbed the 6% dodge there. Let's roll and see if we can find something that we want here. Basically just looking for armor and dodge at this point. I'll take the cake, though. That might make the difference between surviving and not surviving. 
Power generator we don't really need. We're never going to kill the uh, bosses with this setup, I don't think. But fairy is going to be excellent. Just 20 HP regen will help keep us alive for sure. And then I don't believe I'm going to be able to buy any useful dodge items or anything. So we'll just buy head injury. I think that's the most likely to help us. Uh, I guess insanity would have been slightly better than head injury because our crit chance crit chance would be better than the 6% damage for us right now. But neither way are we going to kill the bosses, I don't think. So it doesn't really matter which of those I took. We do have to be pretty careful on this wave because we have a lifesteal-based healing method. And on the boss wave, there's fewer enemies that spawn. So lifesteal is significantly worse. just less stuff to lifesteal off of. We are doing okay damage, but I think, yeah, we're already 30 seconds into the wave and have gotten one boss down to like 80%. So I think we are not gonna focus on um, on fighting the bosses here. I need to not stand on that field of attacks though. <laughs> I say, and then immediately stand on the field of attacks three times in a row. I also do need my 50% dodge to ever happen. Um, there we go. Alright, I walked into every enemy attack there. Almost died there, actually. Um, if that had killed me, we would have died. Or had, <laughs> if that had hit me, we would have died. Luckily, a couple dodge procs and some lifesteal and we're back at full, and we make it through the wave. Alright, so that that build came together um, reasonably well. We didn't quite find enough damage to really make it shine. I needed to find more flat melee damage, and maybe I needed to prioritize that a little more heavily in the level up screen. But overall, I think that was a pretty smooth ride all the way through. The main thing for this character is just focusing on attack speed with spears, and you get all your healing from... Uh, just being the wildling and you get all your HP from using primitive weapons So you just need to make sure that you have reasonable attack speed and some non-weapon sources of damage Wildlings main penalty is being stuck at level 2 weapons So your weapons are not going to scale super hard into the late game You need other things to help you clear uh, waves in the later game and so on So for example these cyber balls that we had dealt 100,000 damage um, Which is an awful lot of damage and were really important to our wave clear we also dealt a massive 2,000 damage with the spicy sauce. Uh, Rip and Tear did reasonably well. Not an incredible showing, but still pretty good. Obviously, if we'd gotten that earlier, it would have been more important, especially if we'd gotten it before one of the Horde waves. Bag, uh, actually shining less than usual. We had two bags and only got 300 from them with 87 luck. I would say we got staggeringly unlucky on crate drops this this run i'm i'm just realizing that now we we had 87 luck meaning we're just more likely we're much more likely to find consumables in crates and uh we we only found um uh what's that 300 over 15 of those which is really not that many we did not find many crates at all so very unlucky a recycling machine also didn't pay for itself as a result so i i, I guess uh, part of why this build didn't come together is just that i'm realizing now i was running really bad there so <laughs> um you know bad beats i guess all right my friends hope you enjoyed this video and of course as always if you have then feel free to leave a comment uh and like the video and you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato and other strategy game content. I'll see you next time, and hopefully pretty soon we'll get to hear what that announcement is. I'm um, fingers crossed for an expansion, because that would be really fun. All right, folks. Cheers. Catch you next time.